and the power pack is a it's fun I mean it, it's funny it's they, they did some pretty heavy stories considering the fact that the characters like the oldest one is like 12 yeah <laughs> which in some ways when you start talking about really young groups uh, especially with my outlook on everything you start getting into some really weird territory well I mean the stories back in the day even like some of their like like you know, the twelve-year-olds. You know, one of the twelve-year-olds' friends. You know, was doing drugs. But then again, that's around the time that starts to happen. Yeah, but there's. I, part of me is glad, and kind of another part of me is really surprised when you start dealing with the young teens. Is you don't have some. We'll just go pedo bear situation. That would happen, but they but also they have percent. superhuman powers. So pedo bear Still. came around. Pedo bear would get rocked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, no kidding. Yeah, you know, they're. There's that whole idea of how most things that happen to kids are done by somebody they trust, they think is safe. You know, it's not, you know, Joe Random coming up to them. It's like, you know, oh, Father Brown, I've grown up, he's like, he's a great guy. No, no, he's touching my junk, he's a terrible person. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like I said, I'm kind of glad they don't go there, but it still begs the question. And I probably should stop before anyone gets a terrible idea. Yes, please. Idea thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Moving on. Uh, yeah. Power Pack, good. If you ever have a chance to read any of their newer uh, Marvel stuff, because Marvel's really pushing them as a alternative for kids, because it, it's you know it's little kids doing you know you know doing the whole hero thing. Yeah. And you know what? It actually you know they're you know technically and before anyone criticizes me for reading it, it's all ages. It, I, am, I am born, therefore I am all ages. <laughs> it's aimed at children, but occasionally it misses. This man's a great example of where it missed. No, Maybe not. Oh, well, I was. I aimed at being an adult, and I missed. Yeah. Well. Yeah. As it's incredibly obvious, I'm not exactly the most adult person. I've got. I think um, the most adult person within the next few feet is the cats. And, and, and we've got Larry over here playing with God on his what on his phone, trying to download. Wikipedia. It. <laughs> ah, so he's looking at up all the characters that we're mentioning and going, "Who the fuck is that?" So he, he's he's edumacating himself. All right. So this book ends with um, Hardball blowing the shit out of himself. Yeah, it looks like he. I didn't want to give that away, but it looks like yeah, he well, may so have uh, sacrificed uh, we'll himself for the greatest, for the greater. We'll put a spoiler on that. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll the, spoiler on like this. The book thing. ends with. The juggernaut, juggernaut off, running off into the moon set. Yeah, running off in, into the desert of Nevada because I feel like he's done his job. And this, I, I this I thought was kind of powerful. This, you can see the sign for you know when you're leaving Las Vegas that says "Drive carefully, come, come again soon." soon. Just and there's a giant crater in Speedball's hand, kind of sitting out there, all scraped up. Um, but who knows? Almost smoky. Oh. Well, it's there are more. There's plenty more where that came from. So yeah, we still have two more books to cover. One of which we're gonna have a special guest step yeah, in. We'll, we'll see. He, we have to decide if he actually wants to come. So we yeah, we'll, we'll, we will still have to pause it for that anyway. Yeah. And also my uh, cookies. Oh damn, those are. We may actually want to. Yeah, let's pause. Yeah, he probably turned. That's fine. Just as long as it's recording now. All right. Yeah. Now it is. Actually, I think I may have. Okay, it may have been paused. We'll find out. <laughs> cool. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll, we'll do our own cursory look just to be nice. All right, so we have two books left. Yep. You know which ones I I vote to, to pick the one I like the least most, just so I can <coughs> talk about the one I like more of the two. <laughs> more yeah, let's go end. ahead and start with the bottom bear. Oh. Okay. Uh, which one are we choosing? That one? Yeah. Oh. This week's big loser is... <laughs> Uncanny um, X-Men. Fear itself. <laughs> you know, and um, I'm a little... Oh, hell, not a little. I am <coughs> biased. Mm -hmm. I, uh... But at least we know exactly what Juggernaut does after... Um, leaving Las Vegas. He goes... Yeah. Somewhere further down the way in Nevada... Finds a guy instead of crushing the guy into a tiny. It's not. I didn't think it was in Nevada. I thought it was in San Francisco, somewhere in north. Well, I think it ends up in uh, San Francisco. I think. Well, I'm saying, can't we say? <coughs> well, he's. Well, we know where he went after Nevada. He kept yeah. going west. Yeah. Well, yeah. Somehow he's 50 miles from San Francisco. <laughs> yeah. This is one that I didn't fail to read. 
I fail. I fail at everything. Well, cool. that we've each had our share tonight, then. But no, so Juggernaut shows up. And the way he comes crashing like that, <coughs> it's like, did he Hulk jump? Or did, is, well, as we know, it's not a side effect of Hardball, because he walked away from that. Yeah, so it's like, maybe he Hulk jumped. Yeah, maybe. Which, you gotta love that. It's so ubiquitous with the oh, jump. Have mm-hmm. a or two bad mora. Or in this case, we're gonna. God, I hope no one recognizes <laughs> that bad statement. I'm a terrible <laughs> person. You're, go- you're going to hail. <laughs> well, no, it, it's an obscure RPG nerd comment. Um, any of you who don't know the statement two bad mora, go look it up, and you'll understand why I say I'm a terrible person. But I think in this case, for all we know, it's like either he jumped or something tossed him over there. So it's it's, on, it's like it's on those question marks. Like, how what happened here? Best so guess just jump because the last time we see him, he's running away. So from not, and also, it seems like he's coming here with a purpose, and that purpose is to get himself a minion. Well, I you know I kind of like the my, my statement when dealing with this is you've got to the scalper to to the end of the world, and that's kind of what it is. Because when he talks, the next time you see him, he's talking like it. If you've ever been to any major event, you've got the scalper outside really talking up the whole thing. And that's very much what Snakeface Boy gets to do. So, yeah, he's the scalper for the end of the world. He's called Snake. Uh, Nathaniel's calling him Snakeface because. He gets a big red snake that appears he, he on the He gets face. a tap from the Juggernaut's hammer and gets an awesome face tat. And, and, uh, <laughs> and yellow Sith eyes, too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he gets the whole evil dude makeover. So, yeah. He's minion. Yeah, he's a minion. <laughs> and that, and he seems to start understanding what he's saying. And it's still in all the weird symbolics. It's not in an actual language. But safe to say, we now got a translator, which is a good thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that, that is kind of an upshot. Which might be the whole point, because... They're supposed to be spreading fear, and um, talking in square, square, circle, moon, moon, X. Talking in ancient as guardian runes is confusing. Well, it it's doesn't not. scare people. I say terrible curse. Square, square, moon, triangle, goat. I goat. Don't, I don't <laughs> get it. You know, Joe on the street's gonna be like, okay, I guess something could be scary about a goat. You know, here's the. You know what? There's like no one person who's going to understand this is Thor and uh, Doctor Strange. <laughs> yeah, but those two are both going to be like, all right, sit spit screen, Fluffy. We don't care. You know, Fluffy. <laughs> yeah. You, would you <laughs> call the jug? I want to know what your powers are going to be that you're going to call the jug Fluffy. <laughs> well, I do this with anyone that isn't the good guy. They end up getting labeled. Fluffy I know, but or th- this is, you know, but th- this brings me back to an art. Uh, Quick detour: An argument I had once, where if I had my ideal power set, uh, it'd be like Squirrel Girl. I could essentially, you know, fight anyone and maybe win, mm-hmm. as opposed to Squirrel Girl, where she does win because she's, you know, Emba, well, you freaking know. imbalanced little. But no, I like <laughs> Squirrel Girl. But yeah, I would tell Magneto to his face that you know he's, he's a whiny little bitch, and, and that he has up. made the Fury very proud with his. Yeah, uh, want to destroy uh, humanity. Yeah, <laughs> Zeke Heil destroying humanity. Hooray oh, 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 that was like at home. <laughs> yeah, well, no, you really. And also, I, also, I, also, I, I, I would uh, go dreidel, dreidel, dreidel. I made you out of clay. Dreidel, dreidel, dreidel. There's several human skulls inside. <laughs> Fuck if it doesn't rhyme. I don't care. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> moving right along to dead folk. Uh, There's a lot of this that's taken up by the classic problem I have with X-Men. Dirty, racist fucks. That you have this whole... In fact, you have like three of them with <clears throat> Scott in the mayor's office. This... Oh, God. I'm like, And why the hell do you pick San Francisco? <laughs> the, There's so many freaks. Maybe they thought they noticed. <laughs> well, no. It's... it's, it's Gay capital. It, it has so many other things that people are tolerant of that you're going to say, yeah, they're not going to be tolerant of mutants. They're tolerant of butt buddies, but oh no, your gene- your genes are wrong. You're evil. No. That well, here's the thing. From from the beginning, 
mutants in Marvel have essentially been an anachronism for race and sexuality Sex and, yeah. and, and, you know, and anything else that people can get bigot, uh, you know, bigot about. Anything they can get their rage on for hating one other human being. Mutant has pretty much been the yeah, but it has been the PC of the Marvel PC way of saying it. Yeah, right, but it's it. just like they're being Hitler, and it's you're being a Jew. You know, it being a Jew to Hitler didn't mean you actually used a menorah or were in any way actually Jewish. No, no, it just I didn't like you, so you're a Jew. It it it's it's what stupid immature high school students say when they. Or at least when I was in high school, they said that's so damn Jewish, and that was fucking retarded. But, but well, it's kind of like how even Magneto will kill you know other mutants without a second thought or has well, a moment of hesitation a, if they're in his way. Yeah, uh, there's a lot in this that I kind of feel is kind of corny, kind of dumb. You, like I said, we've already gone over the whole whiny racist San Francisco thing, which whatever. Um, We've got the scene with Colossus and Kitty. It is cool to know for sure that Kitty now can phase a will again, which is cool. Good for her. Because she uh, says she'll punch him because he's yeah. being a big dolt. Yeah. And well, that's because... We're talking about Peter as uh, her love interest. Peter. Yeah. Colossus. Colossus. Yeah. Big Russian man. Russia. Yeah, well, he becomes the Iron Wall of Russia when he becomes, turns all mutant. <laughs> <laughs> and I, he's trying not to squirt soda across <laughs> the comic, because what I'm saying is... <laughs> the like, laptop and yeah. the big guy. Yeah. The, wall, the Iron Wall of Russia. Russia. I, yeah. I'm sure Stalin will love that. Yeah. <laughs> so, no. th the entire reason for this is... Magic is back. Magic is stupid. It's a cool character, nifty concept, but... For some people. Just, well, no, it's a cool idea. It just shatters reality and then ass rapes it. Well, um, I've never. I, I'm. You know, I told you this earlier. Yeah, I'm wanting to say it now. Yeah, she's. Um. All right, make like it's. Well, it's not even that. I even have a power shots. Too many gimmicks involved yeah. with the character. Mutant. One. She's a mutant. She's a uh, you know Peter's sister. I can't even remember her name. This is how much Natalia. I don't like the character. Natalia. Well, no, starts with an yeah. L. Her but, name but starts with an L. He calls it little snowflake. Yeah. That's all I remember is that he refers to her as his little But snowflake. magic with a K, by yeah. the way, which is like really now. Well, you know they want they, don't, they want everyone to know that she's the fact that she's a mutant. She casts spells. She teleports. She rips well, some time a new one. Well, her her teleporting is her mutant power. What ended up happening with her? Quick backstory: her is she was I don't know about. Uh, seven, eight at the time, and she yeah. was abducted and taken into the limbo where time moves faster. Yeah. And next time we see her, she's 16, 17, full-blown mutant. Yeah. But the thing is also she is now a mutant. She is now also, you know, chrono-crossed, I guess is a term we can use for it. Yeah. And finally oh, oh no, not finally. Uh, she no, has magic right. now. Oh, and finally, yeah, she's part demon because she doesn't no, have no. all of her soul anymore. Well, that they've always... She started out just, as far as I ever knew, being a mutant and part demon. No, that, she, was, that, that was added... Well... Oh, no, you're right. The half-demon was added once she got jacked. Yeah, that's her. Yeah. Creepy metal leg, all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. one of her alternate... She's got so many costumes. What's her name? Uh, Liliana? Liliana? Yeah. You're right, Ileana. 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 Yeah. Okay. Ileana Rasputin. Yes. Yep. I think that's where they get the, the, the part because both, both of them are blood from Rasputin, which is yeah. the guy from R Russia. <laughs> which, you Not know, job. which killed the, uh, killed the Czar. The last Czar of Russia, yeah. Yeah, he killed the last Czar of Russia. Then he got himself, what was it, shot, poisoned, drawn, quartered, hung, and then thrown in the river for good measure. And he still was supposed to live through that. Wouldn't be a really big surprise. Gotta love healing factors. Everybody gets some. Well, you look at her like what I think we're talking about. You got her. She's a mutant, and she got sorcery involved in the whole thing. She's part demon. demon. Yeah, part. And demon. finally, like I said, she's chrono crossed on top of everything else. Yeah. Which I mean, in X Men, isn't too uncommon because essentially, like we, we have writers who don't want to wait 
20 or 30 years to see their cool idea gestate. So they use cable to rip the space-time continuum. It's 900th new one. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, by now, it has a punch card. Yeah, I mean, at this point, the universe, like, if the universe were any, you know, something you me, could actually fuck, to me, it, it's would just be, the fact there, it would be a hot dog down the hallway. There is no <laughs> tread left on that tire. <laughs> <laughs> it's <Hard>. bald. <laughs> it's actually, you can see the treads. And well, pop, pop, pop. <laughs> yeah, you know, this is like the channel. You're throwing a hot dog down the channel. <laughs> this is how a bad they channel. time. A greased channel. <laughs> no, you don't even need that because that, that's the. That's unnecessary. It's, it's a hot <laughs> dog. This is <laughs> so this is a hot dog going down a six-car lane hole in the ground. Well, I'll just say for this book, when it came out, her character, it came out when sorcery and witchcraft was actually, at its peak, very popular. People were looking into it. So it's yeah, like, hey, let's toss a girl into this mix. This yeah, they're action. like, hey, oh, all of her... A girl magic user is such a new concept. Well, no. At the time, she was... Most of the magic users had a penis. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah Doctor Strange was the top guy. And it's like, well, what if you had... We have the eye of Agamotto. We're not talking about the one that's on his cape. Yeah. Hey, you know, you don't have to... <laughs> well, right, I guess hands uh, well, <laughs> Yeah, I'm just gonna say the thing that really you take away from this book is they're bringing magic back into the story, which means she's gonna be important for Fear itself. Which means I'm not gonna like X Men Fear itself because I don't care for this character. So if she's a big part you of it, you may have to look a little beyond her her star because she's. She, they actually did a lot with her in Limbo. If you've read her Philstal Limbo line, she's actually she's she gets somewhat developed, and they do some interesting stuff with her. I read Pixie Strikes Back where they have that's where like she took part of her yeah that's took part of pic, poor Pixie's soul and made a soul dagger. That was wasn't that's like destroy one of the kings of hell or kings of Limbo or something yeah. that we're going to try and take over the world. Uh, so yeah. I want to say it has something to do with this for the fact is that um, I guess one of the other series of shows Loki talking to uh, um, I think it was the the hell the Hela, the Hela who from is some Asgardian Mother of Monsters yeah Mother Monsters Asgardian uh, Underworld Hela Guardians spelled with one L H E L A no 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 Hela. no, no, oh, no yeah, it's H E L yeah she her name the, is Hela she is the ruler of Hell, which with one L, yeah, the Asgard Hell. Well, right. the a Hell is actually an Asgardian. Would have been an Asgardian deity. It's the mother of monsters. It's the source of all of the beasts, all of the mythic beasts out of Asgard come from her power. Wow, she, she is, is not one to be trifled with. Then, is no, she? no, 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 no. Right. The wolves that come to end the world are her gr her grandchildren. They're not even children. These are grandchildren. So there's been some power delusion there. Oh yeah, the worm that represents the world is one of her only direct children. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, dude. So but this she is I'm, I'm getting, one of the prime deities. I'm getting mythologically smacked down right here. <laughs> but the, the thing I'll bring this up though is for the fact is that you know one of the books for yourself Loki was talking to Hela, but then. He went and visited uh, the Mephisto, mystery, yeah. yeah. Well, because his idea is, in true Loki fashion, he's going to get them to fight each other so they're good and riled, <coughs> and then he's going to, you know, find a way to trickster them into getting pointed at the serpent. Exactly. That shouldn't be that hard, um, mostly because, depending on who they hit in the Asgard pantheon, souls aren't going to travel right, and that's going to piss some folk off. Yeah, especially with uh, Mephisto's like, well, Dong doesn't mess. Well, and I also think because yeah, the Mephisto has a piece of their hell. So if he's well, not getting Mephisto, sold, he's pissy. Right now, Mephisto is essentially he's leasing out his part, uh, part of his chunk of the Marvel underworld because it's it's almost like the uh, Catholic underworld in the sense that you know you're saying that there's all these sets, different circles. But essentially, what it really boils down to is hell is a very large place. There's a lot of different people who have stuck a claim there, yeah, and are gathering the bad boys and girls who go there. And then, yeah. of course, you have people like uh, you know Pluto, who is the uh, you know god of the dead for the Romans slash Greeks, and he and the thing well, is, well, Rome, yes, Greek is Hades. Yeah. Uh, well, he's referred to as Pluto though by uh, Hercules, and Hercules is Greece. <laughs> 
it, they know of each other, but yeah. that's what describe it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if they. The, the actually problem is they kind well, of. Well, they kind yeah, of right slam the does target. get the axe towards the end of the standard Greek mythos. So yeah, they, sure, they took silver. Sure, they but kind we'll of have jammed the two together for the sake of moral. But that kind of yeah. makes sense because they are pretty much the same. Well, you've got just Greek ends, in. Roman starts. Technically, there's about twenty or thirty years where both overlap. So. Yeah. When one ends, the other took up the other's reins. So that's cool. I can accept that. But They're close enough. But in this case, going back to the, the why I mentioned this up, bringing this up, who was Tanya, whatever how you pronounce her name, Iliana, Iliana or I'm gonna say Magic. That's how I know her from. She is pretty much one of the um, top Hell people Lords. of the Hell Lords on there, so she has some say well, on that. Because she owns Limbo, exactly. Yeah. But again, it's just I don't care for the character. One thing. And the, a lot well, of you books picked her worst series to read, in all fairness. But you're like, Pixie, it's like four books, like four comic books, and it covers like 20 minutes of time. Still. But, uh, but my reason I'm bringing this up for the fact is, for all we know, this series is going to go a little bit longer. Like we're saying, we got to maybe November. So if you actually got, um, like, how do you actually beat one of uh, Asgard's biggest uh, boss. You, know, back, you, you back. bring in Hell Lords. And you bring in everybody. It's you bring in the big guys. Yeah, you got to bring in some Hell Lords. <laughs> yeah. you, 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 you bring your Death Star and your Sun Killer and sun your, <laughs> your Sun Crusher and your, your what was that big tractor beam? Um, well, no, you're... Something you're. Station. Um, when you deal with super weapons, you really only have two in Star Wars. You have the Death Star laser and the Sun Crusher torpedoes. But no, but I thought they also had some... They have the know. World Devastators, which nom 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 the world into no, one No, 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 but uh, I thought they had some kind of thing that was a giant tractor beam that they think was made by uh, some it other It could dudes. have been used, but it was never built. Ah. It was plans for, because the Death Star and the Sun Crusher were created in the same location along which with... Which is the Maw. The Maw, yeah. Which well, uh, until you know, we're the Sun Crusher... We're going to some quick... Uh, all right, we're gonna leave Marvel quick. Go Star Wars real quick. The Ma is this awesome place in uh, the Star Wars universe and where you have a cluster of through. black holes. Yeah, and there is a gravitational dead zone where the gravity from all of these supermassive black holes actually Cons cancel each other out. And they decided to put a research station there. And I always thought that was the greatest idea because it's like who's gonna have the the fortitude yeah. to it fly into five black holes. Yeah, to play the the hopscotch game, you have to play to actually safely get to the mall. Takes some major set, which is why, of course, they use it to introduce uh, Han Solo because, well, the man has more testicles than head in anywhere else. He was the biggest badass that can do it. Yeah, <laughs> well, the man only has balls. There is no <laughs> intellect in this. I mean, he, he pulls some some nifty smart ideas, but in three quarters of the times, it's nuts first. <laughs> it's like, woo, we're going to chase down the guards. Oh, balls, there's a bunch of them. Let's turn and run. Because I don't want to get shot in my giant balls. <laughs> but that's why, that's why uh, Chewie sticks around, because he's kind of, because he, he's emasculated. That's that whole wife guy thing. <laughs> <laughs> and it's your nuts are bigger than mine. But getting back to the comedy, though, but that's, that's why we kind of brought up the, the magic part, because it might play a factor or even foreshadowing. I, I have to go off topic just for a second here, something I talked to Nathaniel about earlier that I wanted to share with our fans, and that is, I feel like a lot of people, or like a lot of comics, at their base, they only, you know, because they all start off, you know, doing one thing, and as time has gone on, they've expanded, and sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Magic is an example for me of it going bad, because X-Men are best... Uh, you know, X Men for the most part they're best when they're dealing with other mutants. Just as Spider Man is the best when he's dealing with other uh, with his own rogues. Uh, this is why Iron Man is great when he's dealing with tech stuff and es in your internet in uh, corporate espionage. This is why you know Thor is great when he's dealing with gods and similarly powered things. You know, it's kind of like to each is his own. Now I don't mind that they've really expanded their uh, who they'll fight. Because that just makes that actually makes it a lot more fun. But the X Men do damn near everything. They do magic. They do space travel. They do time travel. They do time and space travel. They do dimensional travel. Because I mean, we have Exiles. Yeah. Well, that's more like Ultraverse X Men in. It's Quantum, Quantum Leap. Leap. Yeah, which mm -hmm. is the without which, without uh, 
Well, no, they still, Ziggy. Well, <laughs> they, they get more of a Ziggy later on <laughs> because, well, one of them starts getting voice in him, and that really could just be them going crazy. But anyway, well, uh, <clears throat> I would say in their defense, though, is this mostly because Doctor Strange is mostly more well, likely an Avenger or even the Defenders. So, X Men has their their Doctor Strange with magic. When she was the good guy at the time. <laughs> well, at the time, they if were she ever her. stays a on one side or the other. She, yeah. she she's like I said earlier about a good bad guy. A good a good bad guy is not like morally corrupt and pure evil and one noted. A good bad guy acts in their own best interest. Yeah, and you can't take over the world if somebody's beat you to the punch. Yeah. So you know, if you want to take over the world, you help the good guys so that All right, now they think you're cool. Now back to this because there's not much to talk about here. That's kind of why we've been sidetracked so many times. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, yeah. So there's more. So you know, you you have the thing with magic, and then we go from there to this little scene that I don't even want to mention. So I'm gonna skip it. Well, no, you. It, well, let's just. Let's name names and we won't go because there's like like two things that I think. Right, Namor shows up, sticks he, his tongue down Emma Frost. No, he doesn't even. He tries. He, to he tries to. Yeah. No, no, he succeeds. He gets a little tongue right there, right there. No, no, no. There's like see, never get close. Well, no, there's he gets tongue. The thing is, he he decides that the world's then, ending. Let's fuck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and then he and makes she, a little quick she goes out. and she goes no, and then he goes Summers doesn't respect you, and he's all like, what do you mean? And he, and he makes a little quip. And then he, he says, married the redhead, didn't he? Which to me is just like fuck Jean Grey. I don't, uh, <laughs> even even mentioning her pisses me off a little bit because I, 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 I've I like that it's that kind of implied I, quasi lover's quip. I so know, I but it to me, it t- uh, t- uh, real quick another sidetrack. I hate Jean Grey with a fire well, passion, y- for and you, I know they're going to bring her back eventually. So well, I they count already, they already did. They already did. Dark Phoenix. Where? Iron Man 2.0? Uh, no, not in 2.0. It's in Iron yeah. Age. Iron Age. She's already destroyed the world in that. Yeah, yeah. but they still bar back for 30 seconds, so yeah. Time travel. Well, Time uh, you know travel. what, though? You know what, though? I mean bringing back Jean Grey herself as a full-time character, having to see her in several books a month. Well, you want, you don't, you want to just bury her again and shit on her grave, so... Whatever. Oh, yeah. I'll go to Taco Bell before that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But anyway, but that's... And P.F. Chang, because I'll make sure I'm loaded. So with this, with this, this why this, uh, we just want to mention it, because you just see a little clip what's going on, and it moves on to the bigger thing, what's going on. And then it turns out the juggernaut is coming toward uh, San Francisco, Francisco, which is funny, because every step he takes is actually leaving runic symbols. Which is kind of cool. And you've also got, like I said, the scalper to the end of the world. You have his, mi- you have his uh, missionary. Yeah, his missionary. Yeah, missionary is a good term. We'll yeah. go with that. Yeah. I still like. I'm still calling him the scalper. I'm going to say this guy has some kind of power because it looks like, I mean, you know, I bet someone's going to hit him with something that he's not even going to go down. Yeah. But well, he's invest. He as long as he's scaring people, I'm pretty sure he's getting power because it's the father of fear, and he's got the little snaky symbol on his face. Yeah, and now we're on to the last book. Uh, you know, it has the least to do with the event, but it's still fun because it's, fun. it's Heroes for Hire for itself. Number nine. nine. Number and nine. Heroes for Hire has been a very interesting thing ever since they brought it back because it's very. Um, <coughs> you have. I like the way they do with uh, what control. What was her? Who was her? Misty she Knight. Was, Misty Knight. Yeah. She was one of the original Heroes for Hire. Yeah. And, and now and she's control is what everyone refers her to at least. Well, yeah, and the thing is, she she she'll you know call you up and she'll say, you know, hello, you know, hello, hero, this is control. Are you for hire? And yeah. the thing is, you know, you may you think, well, is money actually being passed around? And it's like really no. no like she'll shapers. pay some people. Yeah, like Electra, it, like Electra. In this case, but for the most part, it's it's favors, it's intel. It's like you do this yeah. for me now. You can we'll do. we'll help you out later. And it's like you know what? Honestly, that works. Yeah, it works, and it makes for an interesting thing because. Then the, you've got those favors being called in later, which <coughs> gives you more story. And which right now, it's always a great. We point. have poor Paladin getting facing boned. facing down a mutated, tr- transformed, hammer wielding Benjamin J. Grimm, aka the Thing, aka he's getting scary mother thing smacked. Yeah, well, no, he's avoiding getting things smacked because otherwise there'd just be a there'd be yeah, a there'd purple and red smear on the wall because the purple's what's left of his costume. Yeah. yeah. Well, then you, you've got Gargoyle popped up, and who is? I mean, I love his intro. The flying car to the side of the head is a great <laughs> intro. 
Because you, you've got Control, who's like, um, we should have some help here in a minute. You should be good. Don't worry about it. And then it's Gargoyle, and he says, uh, you can call me, my friends called me Isaac, but you can thank me later. <laughs> when we're still alive. I feel like that should be an if. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, it, it's realistic. Some of these heroes are like, well, we're up shit creek so far. I don't think I've seen a paddle in days. Dude, <laughs> the boat is gone. <laughs> <laughs> and, I see my f- and my floaties are deflated. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it's like the boat's gone. The, the, the life craft is gone. The floaties are sinking, and did I mention it's the world mouth. is flooding? <laughs> and no, no, this isn't the happy flood. This is shit raining from the sky. And I better see any land for our base <laughs> flood. <laughs> yeah, you know, we, we started out, you know, this has started out in the Mississippi and has only gotten deep and wider, longer, it's and It's funny more you mention that because, I mean, I, every day I check the news now, it, it's like that river is trying to destroy several states that aren't Texas, so I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the river itself is like, fuck y'all. Well, you know, <laughs> the river, rivers do that every now and again. They like to remind people that, that it's nature and we can't control it. Yep. And we've tried way too hard for too long. And yep. It, and and that's which is why we have which is why we have uh, houses on bluffs that <laughs> or houses on the edges of creeks yeah, and rivers that houses sink. That you know, you've got houses people buy, spend obscene amounts of money on that are on a like one year floodplain, which means it's guaranteed every year to flood them out and they come back and rebuild. You know, that I, is I had a uh, teacher, great guy named uh, Leon Schramm. He was a former Green Beret. He learned you know, as a Green Beret, he learned uh, building. I helped him build a house. By the way, we, the only time we ever used 2x4s in the construction of that place was for blocking. Was for yeah. like, everything else we were using two by twelves. Yeah, well, you want some stability. That'll do it. No, yeah, no. That and also, we never, not a single nail was used in the construction of that place. Screws, we galvanized yeah. steel screws. Yeah, that, yes. <laughs> that house is going to be there for the next thousand years. <laughs> but here's the thing: it, the, the foundation it was built on was it had a solid foundation. But we also it was because it is on a floodplain. Probably we built it on top of uh, of twenty foot long wooden. Pillars, and yeah. which which made it you pre the like foundation. Full, yeah, it was like four feet off the ground. Yeah. So he said, any water we actually have, it will go under us, and if there's any more, then it, then we actually don't have to worry. Yeah, you know, it's there. There are ways to do it, but there's still a point where you're going. It's guaranteed to flood every year. Do I really want to deal with it? Let's get back to the comic. <laughs> All right, so. We have a few different things going on in this book. Now, for the most part, this is more. This is not one of those big, huge stories. It this does have a, a tie-in to the one with Strike, because they're actually coming to collect this guy. Uh, Did they say that? Yeah, because um, in this one... Um, See, they I missed it. Yeah, because uh, you've got... It says, my name is Bradley Bedell, which in... Which one was it that's got the... Wolverine. Wolverine. Okay, let me double check. You just look at that. I'll talk about this. All right, so we have several different things happening. One, we have some poor dumb schmo who, in classic comic book fashion, has been, you know, was around a lot of chemicals. Well, he was a drug maker for the mob. Yeah. That was his job. His entire place collapsed around him. And these random... And his random collection of... Chemicals goes dribble, 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 dribble and, and mix with the blood. He, he, he now looks kind of like a green, closeless, ver- bigger, greener, fl- you know, closeless version of Ghost Rider. Yeah, but it looks really cool. <laughs> 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 I like it. No, um, I'm not saying I dislike it. I'm just saying, but he, that's what he looks like. He looks like this. We'll, I'll get to that. Yeah, okay. Um, oh no, it's thirty six D six. Yeah, whatever, so whatever. In fact, his head looks. Oh, weird never mind. Too. I'm wrong. In fact, he almost looks like a cross between uh, Venom and the Ghost Rider. Does never mind. I misread a name. It was very similar, but it wasn't the same guy. All right, so it's Bexley. They were looking for that's Bardley. It's yeah, it's yeah. similar. But no, so moving Who on. Who is the dude with the smoke? That's it's called Shroud. Shroud. Yeah. Okay, they don't give his name, and I was like, WTF. Yeah. Well, they call him Shroud, but they don't give his real name, unfortunately. Well, Sometimes it's hard to say. Shroud, right now, he's he's working for hero. You know, he's he's a hero for hire. He's working for Misty Knight, aka Control, and he is trying to help deal with the issues at 
the raft because I mean yeah. that's the biggest thing right now. In besi <laughs> besides uh, ben a mutated Ben Grimm running around with a big ass hammer. If I'm not well, I about, think uh, Kane is the bigger story circle at the, this point because Kane, uh, Juggernaut. Oh, Kane. Uh, but I think at this Arkham. point, this kind of points out to this is like he's the first responder at the raft. Well, no, he's that, one this of is <laughs> this is like four string because you already uh, the first couple. Start with some of the heroes for hire at the raft. Yeah. Heroes for hire have been focused on the raft because that's because well, also we, the we put a bunch of these guys away. The let's keep well, them there. The other thing about heroes for hire is no real offense meant toward them, but they are not first string heroes. Yeah, they're third, fourth string heroes, so they do the third, fourth string jobs, which are clean up the loose ends. The raft right now is about a billion little strings sitting in a pile, and some spores. It's a smuck has to put it back into a piece of cloth. You know it is. Mm -hmm. It's tangled with Christmas lights, and you yeah. got the job of untangling it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that now it's like too. a box full of them, and there's like ten strings in it. <laughs> yeah, they're not. It's like here's your box. Here's two hundred strings of five thousand lights. Um, you've got a week. Deuces. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. what the universe does. It goes, deuces, you're left, you're crap. But no, so we have Shroud over here, who has the ability to make smoke. He's wearing a... He, he, he can make smoke come out of his cape, and he uses that to obscure himself as he comes well, through you. Yeah, he beats some folk up, which is cool. So, and he's doing this mostly to the ones who are, you know, either non-powered or weakened or, you know, they're tech guys and they don't have access to their tech, because I bet whatever... Locker their tech was kept in if it was actually kept in the raft, which I would hope it wasn't. Oh my god, yeah, because Marvel's a little bit Marvel, Marvel is sufficiently paranoid to realize well, Master of Technology store is trapped. We're not a hundred yards from all of his toys. We're not gonna put you know, we're not gonna do make the DC mistake of putting Mr. Freeze in the same asylum as his freeze gun. <laughs> Well, if honestly, with Batman, if you don't give them their toys, they're, they're too easy. It's bat. It's like bat watching Batman beat up the average bank robber. So, for pure matter of making you be able to stay awake through Batman, they have to do that because it's Batman. All right, but so Shroud is fighting a. Right now, Shroud's fighting a dude called Mashup, which is apparently he's some he's kind of like um, a Frankenstein who's been bionically enhanced and all kinds of nifty toys and you know. ugly. Don't forget about ugly. Oh yeah, he is pug fugly. <laughs> well, his <laughs> face has been like cut into like twelve pieces and sewn back together. Well, and uh, then here comes Electra to pop him in the back of the head. I'll give him credit for looking better than Jigsaw. That's not hard. <laughs> you know, the man who literally like cut his face into like a few hundred pieces and then glued it back on when whatever felt right probably is going to be ugly to me because I think this guy's only got like five pieces of his face, and those at least look like they all changed. Jigsaw looks face. like you lost some. Well, no, <laughs> Jigsaw looks like oh look, here's this piece from my ass. I'm just gonna <laughs> stick that on my face. Is that <laughs> no? Is that scrotum? Like is that a bit of scrotum? Yeah, let's put that on my nose. <laughs> so you know, he's got God only knows what from God only knows where, and we're probably are happier not understanding <laughs> where it came from. <laughs> you know what the funny thing is? I see Jigsaw because you know, you know, Castle did that to him. It makes me laugh because it's like. Haven't you heard the news, dude? You can get a face transplant nowadays. So yeah, run to Europe, hide your ass away, use some of your big ass, you know, mobster money, get a fucking face transplant. And then, you know what you do with your face transplant? Because I know you'll look almost the same because the whole idea is they're putting the muscle on top of your bone, and since your bone structure defines what you look like, but you'll look a little different. It's like, you know what? Just. Just stop being a criminal, for God's sake. Yeah. <laughs> stop but being the big Nobody fish. ever quits. They don't quit when they're ahead. They don't quit when they're behind. They just wait to get fucked again. <laughs> By Frank Castle yeah. and his yeah. big shiny metal dildos that shoot. Yeah, you know the, that the shoot giant smaller <laughs> metal dildo. <laughs> All right, now back to what is it? Uh, Electra and Shroud beating up what? That's firefight and mashup. And firefight, who yeah. has who has pyrokinetic abilities and who apparently is stronger than pyro. Who is the you know poster boy for power connect abilities? Because he's just making them happen, as opposed to Pyro. Well, Pyro, who needs a spark. Pyro's limited. Pyro's actually very limited. He can do niftier tricks, 
because he can he's done really cool stuff. Oh yeah, he but can make he, like he, he can make fire constructs. Yeah, but he can't actually produce. He a needs a spark. Zone. And it's just like he's lame ass. <laughs> it's I I like it because it's phenomenal cosmic power, but I need still need help. It still makes because he was on a team. He was supposed to be a team person. He was a part of the Brotherhood of yeah. Evil Mutants, which <coughs> is the worst name I've ever heard. Yeah, but still, he was a team dude. He worked with the Brotherhood. That's why they always called them Brotherhood because that sounds kind of cool. You don't. Explain what the brotherhood means. You just say, "I'm we're part of the brotherhood. We're, it's the brotherhood. It's the brotherhood. Yeah. It's all good." You know, it, <laughs> no, don't, don't ask. No, no, you, you don't need to know the name. Brotherhood, brotherhood, <laughs> power, respect. Yeah. And yes, all of you. I apologize to anyone I may offend. I will probably offend all of you often. I'm doing some very racist, black powery things, but it's 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 all in good fun. I don't intend to sound like a racist jackass. I probably am, but I don't intend to sound that way. <laughs> all right, back to the book. So Shroud and Electra are keeping things, you know, nailed down. And of course, Electra, you know, she's being paid for it. She's also been told not to kill anyone. And they had to double the fees so she wouldn't stab a bitch. <laughs> Which is funny. <laughs> well, it's, it, it, it's it's like what did what did Murdoch ever see? <laughs> of course, well, then again, she's become she's, she's like, gotten. Nuttier in the worst kind of way. She's got the ultra violent, stabby, stabby kind of. She's also the person I blame for the rash of characters coming back to life because Frank Miller had the fortitude to kill off a very popular character, and then the next writer brought her back. Yeah, with ninja magic. Ninja magic. Which this is how many years before Naruto, so we can say that Marvel did yeah. ninja magic first. Yeah, <laughs> Naruto ripped off Marvel. <laughs> We're saying it now. All of you little Naruto freaks, bend over and enjoy. And again, the web shooter. Joke. And <laughs> again, this is a joke. Take none of what I say seriously. <laughs> but and then the other thing is, uh, and by the way, they're called Narutards. Whatever you want to call them. I don't care. <laughs> I'm not even going to dignify using their own name. They're just those idiots like that crappy anime karate crap. <laughs> and there are lots of dismiss waves through this <laughs> description so because so I hate the show. We actually, and one nice thing about this issue is these very last few pages, we go back to the original story arc and we get some insight because originally what was happening was the puppet master was controlling Misty Knight yeah, and he was using her to do good things, but in a way that, like, all right, she she would take down these guys, great. But the thing is, because she's being controlled, she doesn't realize there's also these guys over there who are doing the same thing, and now their competition is gone, so they're free to do it more. Yeah, but yeah, that that there could be worse. Well, that's why um, he doesn't have that uh, well, yeah. side to do. Think about that. But, You've and got then, you see, and uh, then we find out who it was who was controlling the puppet master during all this. Because puppet master is when we see this, pretty much a Hulk on life support. Well, because he was shot by <laughs> by the yeah. Punisher because the he's a douche. Well, the punish. Well, puppet master was dumb enough to think, oh, I'm going to take control of Frank Castle. That's a great idea because none of my puppets ever get loose. <laughs> yeah, and that is po- Frank Castle has to be possibly the dumbest person to mind control because, because if he can figure out who you are he will come to you in your sleep and he won't quite murder you he'll shoot you like the testicles or the chest or something and make sure you're sufficiently awake to understand how terrible and it was an, an idea to ever try to control the punisher because he's that big of an asshole <laughs> yeah, that's the thing for for a good guy he's an asshole well he's really <laughs> He's one of the few they let be an absolute cack. Because he's not restricted. He okay, basically has his code and says, I can beat the shit out yeah. of you. All right, but we find out that the person is, I think it's... Purple Man? Well, yeah, but I can't remember his full name. I know his last name's Kilgrave, but it's the Purple Man, whose he, power is the purple. same as pup The same as Puppet Masters, but with fair moments. Well, yeah, it's a little better, but it's... Puppet Master actually has to use some kind of like special <coughs> clay to make his puppets. I didn't think it was anything that ridiculous. Yeah, it was. Oh, okay. Well, then he's you know. Well, remember he's a Fantastic Four bad guy. Oh yeah. Then it does have to be obscenely complicated. I forgot. Yeah. I yeah. Because otherwise, 
uh, Reed Richards just looks at it and goes, Science! And then you lose. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> it has to be... So yeah, you have Puppet Master, who's the voodoo wannabe, and then you've got... Um, you a know. Man. Well, a purple man. well, doesn't... Uh, Gorilla Grodd is DC's equivalent, isn't it? Yeah, but he's a, he has a lot less style. Yeah, Gorilla because Grodd is a gorilla. For one of the few things that I'm going to give DC... You know, I like DC in a lot, but some of their stuff is... Mountains and mountains of very stinky cheese. <laughs> um, Gorilla Grodd is funny because he's constantly playing at his power. He'll pick, like, oh, look, you're a woman. You love me because I'm Gorilla Grodd. You love me. Do as I tell you. You. Um, run around over here like an idiot and distract these heroes while I rob a bank. Well, you know what? You say that, it makes me think of Mandrill, whose power is... Who is a monkey man? Yeah, and whose power is that he can pheromonely control women in particular. Yeah, Gorilla Grodd does that in DC. So I, I know, but the mandrels just kind of fu- well, it's they kind both of funny. they both have that kind of jokish flair, which but keeps Gorilla you Grodd is serious. supposed to be kind of like an evil genius, isn't he? Yeah, he he's got some yeah, real but mandrels. Not no, a mandrels <laughs> a joke. He's a complete joke. They're trying to poke fun at how ridiculous Gorilla Grodd ends up being. But he has actually been pretty impressive in some of his stuff. Okay, let's. Uh, this is pretty. No, much that's the end, the it. Uh, we find out that apparently, all of these inmates, the Purple Man has control of them, and now it's going to be a very, you know, it's it's hellacious like, brawl. Yes. And, and like, who's Purple Man's uh, main? Like, who his uh, nemesis? Who's, I don't know who his villain he is. Who's, like, he's he's villain too. You know, that's a good question. I think he's just a plain bad guy. They don't. I don't know if they mentioned who's his. Oh, just found it out. Uh, of all people, Daredevil. <laughs> that explains the weird, because he had Purple Man. Then it ties into Electro, so it makes sense. Yeah, that which is why they have Electro one, fighting him. Cool. So, one of the, one of, you know, one of the only people I ever cared about who was part of Alpha Flight was his daughter, because, you know, he's the Purple Man. He's, of course, going to take that? advantage of women. Yeah, you want to see the dude's name? I don't even, I, I can't, what the hell is that? I don't know, but check out the uh, bottom part. Zebedee? No, Zebedi- uh, Zebediah. 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 Okay. Yeah, Figures, we have Obadiah, Jebediah, Zebediah. <laughs> but read the bottom part of it. You can see it goes for Portman Hill was Daredevil's, but now it goes back to Luke's cage. Uh, That's because he, uh, he yeah. sexually assaulted uh, Jessica Jones, who yeah. is now Luke's cage wife and baby mama. Yeah. So, yeah. oh, they had a great moment in the beginning of the new, of not the not this volume of New Avengers, but when New Avengers first started. Where yeah, they he says he says you know first you're gonna you know kill all your friends and then you're gonna bring me your wife and he just and the thing is the purple man thinks his his powers are working but all the pe but that was also a breakout at the raft but you know he'd been getting drugged so his powers didn't work so Luke Cage just snaps out of it and just goes bam <laughs> bam <laughs> and and yeah it's it's, yeah it's let's see he powers mind control hey big surprise another healing factor you I smart guy. Yeah, apparently he's got some fancy healing factor. Almost everybody has. I think healing factor they throw in there just for the fact of it's no fun when everything ends just because the villain took a bullet. Yeah. Because well, you know, in other words, because if that was the case, the Punisher would be the most powerful hero. Yeah, because the then Punisher just run out going bullet in the shin. Okay, you're gonna wind on the floor for a few months. Bullet in the, you know, that way when you chest shot bullet somebody, they actually stay. You know. That's what the healing factor is there for. So that way, when they get bullet to the head, they can, can they can put them on life support for a while and play at them. This is kind of like what's going on right now with the uh, with Puppet Master. Master. Yeah, he was shot in the he took a gut shot from the Punisher. And yeah. you know, the funny thing is, that, you know, the Punisher didn't feel like messing with Misty Knight right then. He was just like, I don't know how long I've been out. I don't know what's been going on. I need to go catch up. I shot this guy. He he's gonna die. Good enough. I'm leaving. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's that's why that's why I said everybody. If you're a superhero, you get the regenerative healing because they don't want the bullet to be a superpower. <laughs> because no, <laughs> otherwise it, Hawkeye be the strongest. But it'd be it'd be Hawkeye. Uh, okay, it'd be Punisher, Hawkeye, uh, Bullseye, Boomerang. Yeah. And Taskmaster would be the most powerful guys yeah. in the entire and those, universe. The, most of those guys are like second, third, fourth, and lower. And pretty much Steve heroes. Rogers would be the Hulk of that group because he's with his yeah. shield. <laughs> yeah, bro, I'm a shield. I can hide. But I have a shield of like, what is it, Vibranium, which is like the ridiculous metal of broken. Um, but yeah, whatever. Um, hey, gotta love Vibranium. 
Well, you have like what is with like you have like vibranium, and then you've got like the uh, what? What's the shit that Wolverine and adamantium? Adamantium, adamantium. adamantium is essentially a attempt to make artificial vibranium. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you don't even know the, when you first see adamantium. You've got Wolverine, which is one of like the early. You don't really hear the word vibranium until much later that I've seen. Mm. You always heard it about Captain America's shield. It's just but they decided to else. make it less rare. Yeah, it's just you don't like, hear about that, it anywhere but else. But the reason they decided to do that is because uh, they made Wakanda part of the global economy, and that was their main export. But the thing is, they could sell you know a pound, you know, well, a kilogram <laughs> of vibranium, and that one kilogram is worth uh, you know ten thousand dollars. Yeah, so they don't have to mine a whole lot. Well, adamantium, they they said they mine, so it's another. It's not a are you sure? Because I'm, I'm pretty sure. sure. I will say this: it's, yeah, it was easy to get out. to, but the main thing about it is processing and using it was the thing. Okay. Yeah, it's once yeah. Uh, with we, once we they got it. Um, huh? You want to? Okay. Uh, no, he got it. No, I'll keep mm. it just because we're going to talk about adamantium. Okay, <laughs> let me. S- I thought it was mine. We, we might have to cut this into two pieces. Possibly. No, well, no, we're only. Eh, I guess we'll see. Uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, no, actually, you're right. It's a man-made. I thought it. I thought they said they mined it. You know, they might have at one time, but the thing is, I think you know uh, they've Miriam said clean attempt to recreate. Well, it's anybody vibranium. can mine at uh, adamantium, but here's the main thing. No, it, it's it's part vibranium um, because it actually says uh, the metallurgist uh, clean an attempt to recreate his prior discovery a unique alloy of steel and vibranium. To create, yeah, that. And be so what, be what keeping in mind is like versus vibranium, which is already done. You just got to process a little bit. And adamantium, you got to make it. And so, and also, how much it takes to make it is the main thing. You well, know, but the other problem, y- y- it's a, it's a six and one half dozen the other. There's the processing. Uh, there's the actual processing. You know, creation of adamantium, which is a pain in the ass. But then there's vibranium's rarity. Yeah. And yeah. you know. Uh, Wakanda keeping a you know intelligent uh, monopoly on it because well <laughs> our mound bitches. Well, you got the point where like you know they talk about um, uh, Wolverine's Russian counterpart that they couldn't get that metal so they made like a cheap so knockoff. They, uh, so the, we're talking about Omega Red, yeah, can with carbonium, carbonium, yeah. yeah, which is uh, it's more unstable, vastly stronger, more valuable. because it wasn't it wasn't I think adamantium wasn't rare. Does this cost too much to process? It? Yeah, it's. It. It was high dollar versus the, uh, even against yeah, it's Wakanda. It's like, well, it's like, I really want to make that, even though it's cheaper and not as strong. You know, so you get rarity of the, the metal versus uh, even more rarity. It has to be made, and plus it takes so much to make it. So it's like, no, yeah. right, forget it. <laughs> All of the adamantium, because they, ha- they talk about, like, the primary adamantium and then secondary and beta. The secondary is when, like, if uh, Thor went and went... Mjolnir's lightning all over a big pile of uh, adamantium, it changes properties. So they, they talk like, um, or if Hulk like smashed a big pile of adamantium for a while, it becomes secondary adamantium. It's different properties, it's more malleable. It and damn well better be more malleable, it just got hit yeah, by the Hulk. Yeah, it got smashed by the Hulk for a few hours. So it, it's by and defect. Then they mentioned beta, which is this weird thing apparently they did in later on when they harvested adamantium from Logan. fucking Wolverine's bones, which is creepy as shit. The whole stealing thing from people's bones. That let, Let's yeah. not go there. Bone marrow <laughs> transplant. This man is not <laughs> a fan of it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I understand the use of it, but don't tell me. I don't want, it to, know, I don't want to know about it. We're done. Moving yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then there's some Ultraverse topes that do some yeah, weird shit. Yeah, but essentially, we're still at the fact that vibranium is, or not vibranium, that adamantium is a man-made. Uh, actually, thing. apparently, one of the Captain America, uh, Bucky's Captain America suit is laced with adamantium. Well, one would hope. Yeah, yep. but it's you know, hope. it's it's kind of all I was really reading was just the nifty list of who used it. Yeah. And you've got Battlestar, which is a cheap Captain America ripoff. I remember mm-hmm, who's. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the versions of Captain America's shield. Constrictor. Uh, Constrictor. Doc, Doc Ock. Ock uh, Agent Zero. Moon Knight. Bullseye. It's 23, which is kind of a dirt. Bullseye, apparently. Oh, yeah. He uses it when he fucks up his back and shit. So. Well, but we'll also talk about this. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, a, I'm a happy idiot today. because This, this is sad and <coughs> makes me laugh. But. The... Uh, 
today, Marvel and the Dallas Cowboys sign a merchandising agreement. Which is hilarious and ridiculous. Hell I think yeah, it, makes it me is. Laugh. Uh, I love this shirt here because at the top it says the Dallas Cowboys, kind of like the title of the comic. And but then like the cover is a blue and silver versions of Spider Man, Captain America, and uh, classic Thor. Yeah. And then the very bottom it says the ultimate special team. <laughs> yeah, and it's just, it, it's it's one of those like where you, I shouldn't. It's, it's like you, you try no. running back that football after we punt it. You <laughs> fucking try. No yeah. kidding, man. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> yeah, it it, it may, definitely makes me laugh. It's, it's it's not a bad thing. You know, I'm willing to let a lot of things slide. And who uses? Uh, just so curious. Since I got a link to for bringing, I'm I'm not. Uh, I'm, you know what? To me, this isn't a slide. This is a win. But I am yeah. both a Cowboys fan and a Marvel fan. So someone put my chocolate in my in my peanut butter and mixed it for me. Yeah. <laughs> well, apparently, yeah. There's, yeah, yeah. I saw that. <laughs> it's, it, it, it's, it's, we're gonna put up a picture here of but, this. Yeah. Mostly because you got the star from uh, Captain America suit. Now for the Dallas Cowboy, kind of like, yeah, it's a product placement. <laughs> <laughs> hey. I, I like me some product placement. Hey, good product placement is not bad. It this is hilarious and it has its cheese. Cheese, bef- because you like I said, I said earlier. There's a lot of cheese to a lot of these comics. Cheese is not necessarily a bad thing. At but least it's a I like good a, team though. Or yeah, I mean, an enjoyable got, team. Would you want it to be the uh, the Raiders? That would make me laugh too. The <laughs> Buffalo, no, uh, God, Buffaloes. Who are they? The the, the really the ridiculous. Bills? Yeah, Buffalo Bills. <laughs> you you, you know, want like Redonkia out. Rare? You, you, no, you pick like four string heroes for that. You get like uh, Moon Knight and. You don't even pick the you good ones. No, no, yeah, you're right. Moon Knight is too good. You get yeah, like Stilt Man. Yeah, you get like Stilt Man. You get the ones that like you look at them and you well, go, the, who the, the, the rocket hell? racer? <laughs> yeah, you, you pick the guys that everyone goes, who the hell is this guy? And that's why they are the Buffalo Bills because <laughs> everyone goes, who the hell are those guys? Oh yeah, they're the ones that like uh, I don't think they, have they even made it to the Super Bowl like once maybe, <laughs> if that. You know, I, I'm you, not going to comment we, we, because we make I'm jokes. Just, but the thing not is, Buffalo fan, but this reference. We, we make yeah. jokes about this, but you got to say at least with the cap, there's always a chance, as opposed to you know who's going, you know who is who's going to be making it far in the playoffs for. Uh, Baseball, uh, Yankees. Who's going to make it next year? Yankees. And the year after that, Yankees. And until the end of time, Yankees. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, I, I, the football almost didn't have a cap, and it's it's thanks to work by uh, the original general manager of the Cowboys, uh, Tex Stram, who said football needs to have a cap, otherwise we're going to be like how baseball is. Because he, he saw how baseball was starting to get ridiculous then. And he's like, the no, 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 we need to... We want to spread the love. And you know what? By God, it... It makes it more interesting. You end up with some teams... Like, the Cowboys have had a kind of a bad... The last few years have been a little questionable for them. But, you know, they're in defense of a lot of Cowboy fans, unlike a lot of other fans. They've still... They'll still come. They still cheer. It's... You know, at this point, it's not quite as enthusiastic as it's been in the past. But God love them. They're still there. They're still trying. You know, no, I am. You know, it, give me football or give me death. You know, that's that's kind of always a nice thing to see. Is when the fans, even if they fail, they still as opposed give them to the credit. poor, uh, the the poor Lions fans. Uh, you want know, to talk about some guys who are beaten down? It's like not only do you live in Detroit, <laughs> which you know, it's like doesn't even have its industry anymore. Your football team is very good. Yeah. It there's a lot of not good that so yes. Yeah. All right. Um, I think. Do we have any other comic news? Uh, I don't really check real quick. think so. I think that's just the top one to kind of tie it in because <laughs> football and comics. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. was that was awesome. All right. Well, we're done then. We uh, we have to go edit. Well, yeah, we maybe we don't know. We'll, we'll this will all get figured out and it'll be sorted in the wash. Yeah. All right, and yeah, Frank will kill them all, and God <laughs> will sort them out. <laughs> all right, now I'd leave, leave it to God's work. All right, have a good night, guys. Bye bye. Night all.